So you're thinking of getting into the FPV hobby? Well, I'm here to tell you... Don't even bother. Until you finish watching this video. Quite arrogant, that. So in this video, I'm going to be unpacking four years of my obsession with this hobby into just 20 minutes. So lots to get through, lots of value in this video. Let's get going. Oh, by the way, this is not just going to be a video that says go out and buy the DJI Avata or Avata 2 to start FPV. As although it is the easiest way to get up in the air and start, the Avata drones are quite limited. No power on this drone whatsoever. So loud. Everyone in the park can hear it. If you're looking to get into the hobby to chase cars, dive down cliffs, fly in less than ideal wind conditions that you know you quite often get in epic locations the avata drones will definitely limit you significantly anyways i started fpv back in 2020 during the isolation and loneliness of the pandemic and the enforced gap in my work schedule allowed me to deep dive this tricky hobby and research as best as i can on how to go from someone who doesn't have the first clue about drones other than owning like a dji mavic to someone that could get epic cinematic fpv shots and be able to fly drones for commercial jobs perhaps as well so i'm not gonna lie it was tough especially at the time when buying them flyers were not as common as they are now and you basically were forced to learn how to build anyway stay tuned <laughs> little fpv pun there until a little later on in the video when i'll let you know whether i recommend you buy a ready to fly drone or if you should just go ahead and start building your own okay first up you need to start on a simulator no negotiations on this for this you just need a controller right now i'd recommend either the tbs mambo fpv rc controller if you do prefer something a little bit bigger or the tbs tango 2 radio or radio master zorro if you prefer a more playstation type grip definitely stay away from the tx16s i have this radio and let me tell you it's a nightmare for a beginner and also just unnecessarily big that's what she said <laughs> When holding the controller, I definitely recommend pinching the sticks as I find it easier for finer controls, but the thumbs, if you feel comfortable, is totally fine as well. Also, get one of these. This is a lanyard that goes around your neck and you may think, why would I need one of those? Trust me, from my experience, it's just nice to have your controller sitting around your neck while you're doing your FPV drone flying, rather than having to put the controller down all the time when you wanna change your batteries, tighten some screws, or or even just punch the ground out of pure frustration after you crashed again. So be the worst way I could have crashed is from right at the top of the tower all the way down. You can then just simply hook up your controller that you've bought onto an online simulator. I chose Liftoff and it worked great for me, but also another one I'd recommend is Velocidrone. Acro versus Angle. Make sure you do your training in Acro mode as this is the mode that although it is the hardest, is what true FPV pilots use to be able to fly with full manual control over their drone and have it respond to your stick movements fully. Which for example means if you roll to the left a bit, you need to then roll back in the other direction to level out the drone. There is another mode called angle mode, which is easier as it levels itself out after you stick input, similar to a Mavic drone perhaps. But for me, it's just pointless to learn to fly in this mode. Trust me, in the beginning, when you start in the sim, you might feel like you will never get the fact that going forward means you need to pitch your drone forward and control the throttle at the same time. This took me a little while to understand. Once you get your head around that and just practice flying straight and banking corners, you will feel good. You can then start to understand a few other maneuvers such as lowering the pitch stick and increasing the throttle so you can fly up. And then one of the scariest things when starting FPV, which is letting the throttle down completely so that you just drop. <laughs> Understanding the relationship between the throttle pitch roll and your basically is your goal here in the simulator so when you're outside and take off for the first time you can feel comfortable enough to correct yourself if you put too much stick input into a particular direction i stuck about a week solid which was about 30 hours of sim time whilst i waited for my drone parts to arrive that to be honest is probably above average but as i mentioned earlier it was during a pandemic so not really much else to do okay now you're ready to fly it, but you need a drone and some goggles. Let's start with the goggles first. Nowadays, in 2024, we have basically the choice of these 
for goggles from DJI to purchase. I'd say if you're starting, get these on the used market as you can get them super cheap now and they will fly with anything apart from the latest O4 Air unit from DJI that they have in the new DJI Vata 2. If you do have a bit more to spend and are not bothered about switching out the antennas on the goggles or having a touchpad, get the Integra goggles like me, that's the ones I have, as they will work with everything including the DJI Avata 2 and the O4 Air unit. And if you're flash with the cash, then just go ahead and get the latest and greatest Goggles 3 as they are currently the top of the line from DJI. Oh, and the fourth pair are the Goggles 2, which are better than the Goggles Integra, but not as good as the Goggles 3. And price-wise, sit between the two as well. Setting up your goggles and linking up the DJI's O3 and O4 Air units are super simple these days than they were in the past. Basically, just make sure both are updated to the latest firmware and hold down the on button on the goggles as well as pushing this button on the Air unit and they will bind together and you'll be able to see what your drone sees through the goggles. Okay, now you have your radio and goggles, you need arguably the most important part, which is the quad. So this is where you need to start searching and researching all the best parts on how to build them together. Well, that's exactly what I did back in 2020. And although it was useful for me to know how the drone was put together and also to learn how to solder, if I could go back, I would have just got myself a ready to fly small 1S or 2S drone that would not have been as overwhelming as the powerful five inch drone I built to start on. This way you're up in the air flying, getting your confidence up with something that you don't mind crashing about too much. And so when you do finally buy that first expensive five inch find and fly quad, you won't be a nervous jittery mess like I was. I'll link a couple of starter drones I recommend you get down in the description. After this make sure you bind up your receiver to your controller. Next is setting up in beta flight. When it comes to setting up a bind and fly drone in beta flight they require you to run through the software and do the following to get it ready to fly. So first of all put your drone on a flat surface and click calibrate accelerometer. Then go down to the configuration tab and make sure you put 180 degrees in here as well as making sure that these two are checked for use of the beeper. Then come down to the receiver tab and make sure you change these values to 1010 and 1990. In the modes tab is where you can set up your switches how you like. To change a switch just click auto on a particular switch and then on your radio press the button on which you want the switch to be. Move the yellow line over the yellow dot so it covers it when the switch is selected and from then on the switch will now control that action. There's loads of options here but in my experience the only ones I've ever needed are the arm, pre-arm, angle, beeper and flip over after crash. After this go down to the motors tab and with your props off check this button and go through each motor to make sure the motors are mapped correctly. So that means if you spin number one then the bottom right spins and then the same process for the other three. Lastly, just come down to the OSD tab to make sure that you have some info showing on your goggles such as battery voltage level or whether you're in angle or acro. Here you can basically customize it however you like. And it goes without saying, but I will mention it anyway, when you are testing your motors for the first time in the house, then please, please, please do not test with your props on. Just don't do it. Very unsafe. There are way more comprehensive videos on beta flight setup and I'll link a couple down in the description, but for now, this is basically all you need to know to get your bind and fly up in the air. You will also definitely want to install a loud beeper like the Vifly V2, which is amazing because after its initial one minute of quietish beeps, it will then start to beep really loud, like very loud. If the quad is not unplugged after that one minute, which of course is perfect if you've lost your drone as the combination of checking the last moments before it crashes in the goggles and listening out for the beeps has allowed me to find my crash quad multiple times, especially with a large open area. Honestly, a lifesaver, and I can quite confidently say without this, I would have lost quite a few quads completely. Now, you're probably wondering why I keep banging on about five inch drones as some kind of holy grail of drones to fly. Well, essentially a five inch quad, five inch FPV drone is known to be the sweet spot as a drone that can basically 
do it all, which means smooth, cinematic, medium range, freestyle and racing. With its power to weight ratio being optimum, especially for freestyle, it's the quad that is most versatile and most serious FPV pilots have at least one of these in their fleet. When it comes to buying a five inch bind and fly these days, there are loads of great ones. Unlike when I started, when there was basically just iFly. Now there's also Gep RC, there's uh, Diatone, a host of others. I'm currently using a Gep RC Mark V and it's absolutely amazing in my opinion. And the one that I'd currently recommend as your first five inch. Anyway, all these companies make great stuff now and the only question you need to decide when you're buying is which receiver you want in yours. The receiver or RX is the antenna that connects your drone to your controller. If you took the Mambo or the Tango 2 like I recommended earlier then you need to choose with the TBS Crossfire which is the system I've used and that I recommend. The other option is if you want a 6S or a 4S quad. This refers to the power of the batteries and a 6S has six cells, making it more powerful than a 4S. I did start off with a 4S five inch drone, but I think I would recommend you go straight into 6S as you will most likely end up with that down the line anyway. So instead of having a load of 4S batteries that you, that you then need to sell on or get rid of, just go straight for 6S because you will also benefit from the extra power to get you out of troubling scenarios and also longer flight times. For the batteries, definitely don't cheap out. Otherwise, bad things can happen. I, I'm still in shock to be honest, because it went up in like flames i could see it in my goggles first make sure you get reputable brands like these or even just the batteries that the drone manufacturer recommends when it comes to charging lipo batteries the temptation is to do multi-charging as individually they can take 30 to 40 minutes each if you're charging them properly i'd stay away from that at least in the beginning and get one of these dual chargers which safely allows you to charge two at a time always charge in a lipo bag and be in the same room as the lipos whilst charging for more in-depth lipo battery charging videos i've linked them down in the description below and i recommend you watch them as well build or not to build that is the question so as i mentioned earlier i did build straight away because i lacked options at the time but now with so many amazing bind and fly drones available i'd recommend saving yourself the hassle of building and tuning and get a ready to fly one because they're amazing now to be honest and much better than what i can build and tune myself however i still would take the time to learn how the drones are put together through youtube tutorials joshua bardwell and also to learn to solder if you don't know how to just so you're not overwhelmed by doing any cheap repairs in the future that you will inevitably have to do otherwise the only other alternative would be writing off the whole drone and having to buy another one so for example a common issue is damaging a motor if you at least know that you can buy yourself a ten dollar motor to swap in rather than having to buy another five hundred dollar by the fly quad you're saving yourself a lot of money down in the description i will have links to all the tools i recommend you have in your bag with you for common fpv repairs as well as the soldering iron i've used for four years and it's still going strong even now and also the solder that i recommend you use as well also a pro tip when soldering is to use one of these flux pens with lots of flux on the areas you want to solder as it helps the solder to run smooth rather than get all dry and sticky. In the beginning I did not have the first clue about soldering and to me it looked a bit overwhelming so I bought these practice boards to start with and it helped a lot. Oh and also get yourself one of these whilst you're at it. This is a smoke stopper and after any soldering work you do you should plug this in first in between your battery and XT60 plug to check if you did a good job with your soldering or if you potentially have a short. This little thing could potentially save you hundreds as well so it's worth the few dollars it costs to have in your kit. To use a GoPro or not. For most of my FPV journey I've used a GoPro on my quad because the onboard camera before the new DJI O3 Air unit was just not good enough for cinematic footage. Now that the O3 Air unit has come out with decent alike and 10 bit color and is able to stabilize in gyroflow for buttery smooth footage i'd say if you're starting save yourself the extra expense of a gopro and fly with the o3 to learn as its footage is pretty good now definitely more than usable for social media and also the reduction in weight means your quad will be more fun to fly with longer flight times the only time i'd say put a gopro on top is when you feel like you're crashing a lot less after a lot of practice and if you're doing some work for money because then you may appreciate the little bit of extra quality out of the gopro 11 or 12 as well as better dynamic range and low light performance oh, and also another recommendation if you are going to look to get a gopro is to maybe look into getting a gopro subscription as they give you two free replacements a year if you break yours which easily happens in fpv 
as well as discounted prices on their products. Okay, just before you're about to fly, you wanna do some checks. So first of all, an area that has tripped me up many times is not properly checking the prop direction and motor direction. This is easily done here in B2Fly and the props want to be set in the same direction as the motor spinning. Make sure you step back, give yourself a good distance between you and your quad in case it flips out. Definitely do a quick hover test with the goggles off to make sure that everything is okay. As a beginner pilot, I'd recommend setting your camera tilt to about 10 to 15 degrees. The amount of degrees your camera is tilted will dictate how far you need to pitch forward to get the horizon of your drone level. And the more you pitch forward, the more throttle you will naturally add at the same time, which increases the speed of the quad. Therefore, if you want to zip around like a pro FPV racer, you could have a ridiculous angle of 60 degrees and your quad is basically like this the whole time. But for cinematic, most pilots are there between 20 to 30 degrees and as i mentioned starting a little bit below that for your first few flights will be the ideal place to start definitely start your flying in a wide open area or a big field with soft grass under and no one else around this is what i did to ensure that crashes will have a better chance of survival and i'm not constantly on the repair table and also just keeping it safe no danger around to possibly injure someone i'd say the two main things you want to focus on first up is your throttle control and also your ability to hover if you can hover a five inch fpv drone in one place comfortably then you're doing well as it's not that easy to be honest and takes practice but it will make you feel like you have good control over your fpv quad fpv footage from high in general is pointless i would say because you want to be getting close to the ground and you want to be getting close to subjects to really enhance that dynamicness of the shots but to start practice a little higher up off the ground to give yourself that time to recover whilst you're learning throttle control and have your finger close to the arm switch in case you feel like you may need to suddenly disarm your quad which will mean it'll fail safe and drop to the floor safely and also i feel like fpv is a big mental hurdle so a quick word on getting your mind and body under control when flying FPV because a big part of flying is keeping your nerves and adrenaline under control and some people are naturally better than this at others especially if you're already an adrenaline junkie if like me you're not then try just taking a second before you take off take a few deep breaths to calm your breathing and get as relaxed as possible because the more relaxed you are the better split second decisions you will make and in fpv because you're flying so close to things so close to the ground those split second decisions are sometimes where it counts after that it's just practice 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 and look to see if you can meet up with people in your area that you can learn from as this will push your development along much quicker and to be honest it's just much more fun to fly with others than alone Yay! i've done it Another bit of advice when going out flying in the beginning is if you do go out and start flying, especially if you're looking to make a day of it with some friends, don't go for your most crazy moves first up. If you have, say, eight batteries to get through, take at least one or two to get warmed up and used to your flying environment, get the lay of the land and the weather conditions and slowly ease into it. On the flip side of that, you can reward yourself for getting through your first six batteries unscathed with the final two batteries where you just push yourself out of your comfort zone to achieve possibly a money shot that you've never got before. Absolute mess of shit everywhere. Broken, broken. Oh, yeah, yeah. This advice obviously does not apply if you're out trying to get a shot and need to nail it on the first battery. That's more of an eight mile scenario where you just need to be ready and not choke. <laughs> If you are getting to the point in your FPV journey where you're being approached to do some commercial work with your FPV skills, then make sure you use the right type of quad for the right job, such as any work around people or indoors, you should use a ducted cine whoop. And for any chasing of vehicles or flying mid range, more than likely you want to use a five or six inch unducted quad. And for those long range mountain surfing shots, potentially look into getting a seven inch unducted quad with bigger batteries and a GPS for those longer flight times and extra added layer of safety. And also if you are working for money, be professional, make sure you take along a laptop with you so that you can be checking your shots, just like you would do if you're a videographer and you're checking your shots after you, you've shot them in your camera. Make sure you're checking on a laptop on a proper screen to see if you nailed it in terms of exposure and also if it stabilizes okay in gyro flow. And if you want to know more about how to get the best possible cinematic FPV footage, then go ahead and check this video out I made that unlocks all the top secrets that only the pros know. 
I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care. Have a great day.